Hi, I've been asked to see if I can give some advice about how to run a trick called chops. It's the one that looks like this. Everybody loves that trick. Audiences love it. It looks very cool. I would say this is a medium level difficulty trick. Uh, and I say that because there are several different things you need to keep in mind, uh, including not just the shape of the pattern, but also this idea that while one hand is doing a fairly lazy throw, the other hand is driving a club down through the pattern. So you have to get a feel for that. Here's what I can try to offer you in the way of help. This trick is done out of a cascade. Uh, with that in mind, you need to start by making sure that you can keep the cascade pattern fairly wide. This trick originates from a pattern like this, not from a pattern that's right in front of you like this. Second point, you have to understand the trick before we actually drill it. So you've got a wide cascade, now you have to understand what's happening amidst that cascade. So here's what it is. The concept of the trick is the following. I'm going to do a cascade pattern, and out of the blue, I'll take one club that I've just caught, and while the other club is moving around the way it would in a standard cascade pattern, I'll take this one and I'll drive it down through the cascade pattern, and then I will hop it over to my left hand. Then I'll take that one and do the same thing, drive it down to the pattern and hop it over to my right hand. Okay. That would look like this with one club. Understanding what happens with this trick mentally is really important because having a good mental picture of that is what allows you to figure out how to pull off that maneuver. So here's the next thing. You want to figure out how to do that trick, not all consecutively, but how to just do it once. And what I mean by that is, try to take the club, throw it through the pattern, slam it down to the pattern, and then hop it over. Here's how to do that. You'll juggle a three standard three club cascade. Whenever you're ready, you'll take a, cl a club that you just caught, and you'll move it over the other club, over and around the other club, put it down to the pattern, and hop it over. At this stage, it's not a fast trick. I mean, watch how slowly I can do it. It looks a lot faster later on, but right now, I've got, if I do nice, wide pattern, if I do nice, decent, lofty throw, I have plenty of time to take that club and move it over. I am not I am not taking this club in the left hand and doing any kind of under the wrist thing. There is no under the wrist in this. If you've been practicing doing under the wrist as a means of doing chops, um, stop. Because this is not the same trick. So again, juggle, take a club whenever you're ready, simply bring it over the top. Do that, go back into the juggle. So I drag it over the top, hop. Drag it over the top, hop. Drag it over the top, hop. Pay careful attention to this movement. You want to make sure that as you're looking, you're not driving that club down onto the very one that's supposed to come over to the other side of your body. Also, when you do the hop, don't get lazy on that. Make sure the little hop is to the left hand or to your other hand in a spot where you are ready to take it. So for example, this might be a decent arc but if I do this and hop it way over here, then I'm at a disadvantage, okay? So that part of the trick happens right in front of your body. The, the trick happens right here, okay? This part happens in front of your body. I would say that the slamming and the hopping happens pretty much within the width of my torso. The pattern itself looks wider because you're moving all the clubs around as part of the cascade. But the slamming down and hopping part happens in a pretty short uh, span here. So drill that. Over the top, hop. Over the top, hop. Over the top, hop. Over the top, hop. Alright, so you've worked on getting yourself the slam hop combination 
yeah, every once in a while in the cascade. Now the key is to drill each arm in isolation. So I mean by that, for example, do five consecutive slam hop maneuvers in your right arm and do five in your left arm. And get a feel for that because that is what starts to move the trick along at a, a speed that is going to more closely resemble what happens when you do it all consecutively. So that would look like this. The reason you want to spend time figuring out and getting a feel for what it's like to do those consecutively is because this is where you start to learn whether or not the placement of the club after the hop is in a desirable location. It needs to be consistent. And it's easy when you do it just every once in a while to kind of make it consistent. But when you start to do them consecutively, you'll notice that in the beginning, as you're learning the trick, sometimes the hop will be here, sometimes the hop will end up here, sometimes the hop will end up over here, and you need to have it always land in a consistent place. Because having it land consistent, consistently is what allows you to then move the trick and do every throw as a slam hop maneuver. You can't have variation on where that hop turns out to be. Okay? It's got to be in the same place or relatively same place every time. So pay attention to that as you're doing that maneuver with every arm, I'm sorry, with every throws in the arm and get a real feel for that. So drill that until it's consistent. Building this trick incrementally is important because having control over the chop pattern is utterly essential. If you have any variation in the movement uh, and the club is not exactly where you want it to be, then you could, of course, either miss your catch, you can miss the hop catch, you could grab it too lightly because it wasn't really where you wanted it to be. Uh, when you do the chop, you could either throw the thing into the audience, throw, them in, throw it into somebody. Uh, you could take the chop and accidentally hit another club that's coming around, and that could cause injury to somebody. So you, there's no room for error. So build this trick slowly. All right, so you finally practice getting five or six uh, of those slam chop pieces with the right hand, same with the left hand. You're watching and feeling pretty good about the placement of those hops uh, after you've done them. So now the trick is to try to get this stuff running. So here's how you do that. You build slowly. What I mean is do the cascade, do two slams, and go back into the cascade. Do two again. Re really getting a feel for chop chop back into the cascade is what will allow you to realize whether or not your pattern is wide enough, whether or not the slam is coming down in a place that avoids the other clubs. Doing two in a row allows you to sort of feel and make sure that the hops you're giving to yourself on your left and right hands really are in the right place. And if you can do two and go back into the cascade, then do three, do four. So eventually what you're doing is moving into as many of the chops as you want to be able to do in order to impress um, anybody who might be watching you. So chop, chop. Chop, chop. And then do three. Chop, chop, chop. Chop, chop, chop. Then do four, then do five, and ad nauseum. As always, have patience with this trick. It's not one that's going to be coming to you overnight. Uh, at least I don't think so. Um, so, just hang in there with it. Uh, again, thanks for the quest. Good luck.